Okay, this is part two of the update of the tote composter. Uh, I've drained the bulk of the fluids out and uh, I'm just going to let it drain for a while. It will actually um, drain quite a bit. There's a lot of area there that needs to, to come out, but it, it drains rapidly, you know, within within probably 30 seconds to a minute that tube would fill up again, which is a one inch internal diameter. Stray larvae. There we go. So now perhaps you can see, I'm trying to do this one handed with a one wet hand. Okay, I don't know if you can tell, but basically the little small amount of water that or liquid that you see in the bottom there is is um, just a few millimeters deep. So basically the unit is um, drained of you know 99% of the liquid that was in there just a moment ago. I'll let you get a, a look now that uh, we've drained the water a little bit. Just an idea of the uh, state of the colony here. Now I I didn't feed this unit for a while and the result has been that I don't have, I'm guessing here, I don't have the quantity of small and medium larvae that uh, I would like to have. So uh, it's nothing major, but my hypothesis at this point, you know, there are some smaller ones there, but my hypothesis at this point is that when you take breaks from feeding, you will get reduced egg laying. It seems, seems pretty simple. Um, that in that um, the fresh waste would send a signal to females coming to lay eggs that you know this is in, in, in fact a good egg laying site. If the waste is all you know mostly been processed, um, they might well they they will they do sense the presence of other black soldier fly larvae and that is attractive to them, and the smaller larvae are more attractive. Um, again, maybe that has to do with the potential for, you know, the potential for food uh, being greater. So when you do, you know, when you, I think the combination to attract the most uh, amount of females to lay eggs are a combination of uh, juvenile larvae being present and also uh, waste that needs to be processed. There has been some egg laying, but, uh, um, you know, it's... Um, it's in a cycle, it's not continuous, and, and to, to some extent that might be just part of the natural cycle where it, it ebbs and flows. But uh, I'm breaking the squash up because there was no entryway past the skin, so when you have that condition, the larvae cannot break through the skin of a vegetable. And this, this squash is pretty hard, so this is something that's gonna take them a while. Although now that I've exposed the inside here, they will have an opportunity to uh, break this down. This has been in there since yesterday. I put a large quantity of uh, produce in here yesterday, rotten produce, tomatoes, and, and a lot of squash. Uh, the ones that are left, um, with a few exceptions here, but the bulk of what's left, they couldn't penetrate yeah, easily anyway. Uh, let's see. Speaking of egg laying, I just, one of the things that I hadn't addressed until a few days ago with this unit is an egg laying substrate. So in addition to needing the right combination of waste uh, and the, the presence of larva, uh, also if uh, you're at that state where you've already um, do have some larva present, those are I think important factors in inducing females to lay. But I'm working on another theory that even presented with those factors, uh, you know, some uh, attractive waste present, some other larvae present, that in the absence of a safe and protected um, place to lay their eggs, they, they may not lay, choose to lay eggs in that location. Um, especially if there's maybe a, some other waste competing with, with the unit. So, again, that's just a working theory that I've started thinking about a few days ago. But this unit did not have, other than some random pieces of cardboard that I had in there when, because I was transferring eggs from another unit, there really wasn't much egg-laying substrate. So um, what I did, just a quick 
experiment to um, to provide some uh, some egg laying stuff trade or these stiff foam pieces these are I think used um, for flower arrangements it's a very coarse texture stiff foam and I've made many holes in it I think ranging from maybe three to five I use two different size um, cylinders to shove in there and make these holes and so as soon as I had put them in I, I had a female laying on there in the um, that's pictured in the thread that's dedicated to this composter on our forum but um, this is a little bit rough it's just kind of put in there and wedged sideways to cut into the styrofoam that's what keeps them there but honestly um, the downside to this method is that you know short of taking out the entire piece you really can't transfer eggs but if your goal is just to provide an attractive substrate for the egg laying I think this might be completely adequate um, it seems to me like uh, just exactly what a black soldier fly female would would want in terms of a safe place to lay eggs well actually I think that might do it for now um, the only other thing I'll touch on is that you know I have been focusing on a couple things this season one is the heavy use of coir uh, because I I don't really see a downside to using a lot of it yes it takes up volume but if I have to clean the unit out a little sooner that's fine and I've already processed quite a bit of waste and you know I'll build the level up uh, several centimeters and the next day it's down and it you know it, it fluctuates up and down of course as they process it but uh, I think that this volume is uh, that is still available if you subtracted out the coir is a, is a great amount of space uh, for processing since they do break it down so thoroughly I think there's still plenty of volume plus when you get the good drainage that I think gives me um, a lot uh, easier operation of this unit without uh, as much risk of it uh, clogging up and becoming flooded and eventually anaerobic so uh, as you can see this quite a bit of uh, liquid I've taken out so the other thing that I've, I'm thinking now that I'm well that's the second part in addition to the coir it goes hand in hand is that I've been flushing uh, most of my units I'm just going to close this so that maybe we can see not as easy one-handed excuse me With the regular flushing of this unit, well, I'm, I'm clearly getting a lot of uh, tea, if you will. That's a bit diluted. It's not purely the tea from the the waste that I'm producing, but of course, it's well. In this case, it's got some brewery uh, byproducts in it. Other times, I've used uh, fresh water. So, you know, it's diluted uh, tea. Uh, I have been putting some of this on my, after straining out any stray larvae and putting them back in to the compost, I've been adding this to some plants that I'm growing to, um, for my breeding room. But um, I'm producing a lot of this tea, which I think deserves some experimentation. So uh, because it's not anaerobic, it seems like it's a fresh product that would be easy to work with. And um, you know, any suggestions that you have, because I haven't done a lot of traditional composting, uh, or working with worms, so this tea is something that I have very little experience with, but um, it might be that a unit that's being flushed as often as this one um, not only generate larvae, but might be a great generator of this liquid uh, fertilizer made from the tea. So anyway, that'll. I know this was a long update, but there's a lot going on with this composter. Um, again, you can ask questions or leave comments at the forum and get more details on this unit and other units. Uh, I've got a very interesting unit made out of concrete that's featured on the forum. And uh, there's also a video on my channel uh, using that unit to illustrate flushing that system. So anyway, um, thanks for watching and um, updates to follow.